Hi there, my name's Colin and I'm one of the medical Colin. students here. Can I ask your name please? Yes, my name is Liam Snodgrass. Okay, Mr Snodgrass, and how old are you? I'm 31. 31. I've been asked to do an examination of your cardiovascular system today. Yep. That'll just involve me having a look at your hands, feeling some of your pulses, and having a look at your face, and having a feel and a listen to your heart. Does that sound okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Are you comfortable at the moment? I am. Okay. Since your chest is exposed, I'm just going to have a look at you from the end of the bed to yep. start off with. From the end of the bed, Mr Snodgrass looks comfortable. He doesn't appear short of breath, and I can't see any obvious surgical scars. Around the bed, I can't see any medicines or any adjuncts that could be used to, as medication for any cardiological disease, and I can't see any ECG equipment or heart monitoring equipment. I'm now just going to have a look at your hands, if that's all right. Yeah. Can you just place your hands out in front of you? That's great. On inspection of the hands, they look a symmetrical colour. The hands feel symmetrically warm. Looking around the fingernails, there's no sign of any tar staining, and I can't see any splinter hemorrhages in any of the nail beds. Could you put your fingers together like this for me? There's also no sign of any finger clubbing. Now can you turn your hands over? That's great. Just looking in the palmar crease for any pallor, which would be a sign of anemia. You can relax your left hand, and I'm just going to have a feel of your pulse. Mr Snodgrass has a regular pulse of 60 beats per minute and can I just feel your other pulse at the same time and there's no sign of any radial radial delay I could also, also test for any radial femoral delay at this point Do you have any pain in your shoulder Mr Snodgrass? No Okay, I'm just going to lift your arm up in the air testing for a collapsing pulse and the collapsing pulse is not present Moving up the arm, ideally now I could test the patient's blood pressure. I'm coming up to the neck, I'm now going to observe for a JVP. So could you turn your head to the left and look up to the corner of the room for me? And there's no sign of any raised JVP in the neck. Okay. I'm now going to feel the patient's carotid pulse. So could you just turn your head back towards me and then lean your head back gently? And the carotid pulse has a normal character and a good volume. On closer inspection of the face, there is no xanthelasma around the eyes and there's no corneal arcus in the iris. I'm just going to gently pull down on your eyelid. There's also no pallor in the conjunctiva. There's no malar flush on the cheeks and the lips look well perfused. Can you open your mouth and stick your tongue out? There's no central cyanosis. There's no tar staining on the tongue and there's good oral dental hygiene. There's also no angular stomatitis at the sides of the mouth. On closer inspection of the chest, there's no midline sternotomy, inferior clavicular or lateral thoracotomy scars. There's also no obvious chest wall deformities and no obvious visible pulsations around the apex of the heart. And now I'm just gonna have a feel of your apex beat. Is that all right? Are you in any pain at all? Okay. And the apex beat is located in the fifth intercostal space in the midclavicular line, which is normal. I'm now going to feel for any murmurs, thrills, or heaves. So first of all, feeling in the mitral and tricuspid areas and the aortic and pulmonary areas. There's no thrills present and feeling for any heaves. There's also no palpable heaves on the chest either. I'm now going to have a listen to your heart. Mm -hmm. First of all, listening for the apex beat. Okay. And can you just gently lean your head back so I can feel your carotid pulse? and identify the first and second heart sounds. Listen first of all in the mitral area, 
bit of tricuspid, pulmonary, and the aortic valves. Okay, and can you just lean your head back for me again? I'm going to have a listen to your neck. So can you just hold your breath there and breathe normally and hold your breath there and breathe normally. And there's no sign of any carotid bruise. And can you sit forward for me? That's great. Okay, can you take a nice deep breath in and then breathe all the way out. Okay, and breathe normally. And I can't elicit any signs of any aortic regurgitation there. On auscultation of the heart, I could hear normal first and second heart sounds with no added sounds, and I could hear no carotid bruise or any murmurs. Okay, Mr. Snodgrass, can I ask you to sit forward for me now? Thank you. I'm just gonna have a listen to the bottom of your lungs. So can you take a nice deep breath in for me, and out, and in, and out. That's great. So there's normal vesicular breath sounds, which were symmetrical on the left and right. There were no added sounds, crackles or wheezes. And I'm just going to have a feel of the bottom of your back now. And there's no sacral edema. You can sit backwards. I could also check for any edema around the ankles. Which isn't present. Okay, so that's me finished my examination, Mr. Okay. Snodgrass. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so to summarise, this is Mr. Snodgrass, and on an examination of his cardiovascular system, there were no peripheral signs of any cardiovascular disease. He had normal heart sounds with no added sounds, and there were no signs of any heart failure. To complete the examination, I could take a urine dipstick, do fundoscopy, and feel the patient's peripheral pulses as well as do an ECG.